Hello, and welcome back to the Security Metrics Podcast. My name is Jen Stone, and I'm one of the principal security analysts here at Security Metrics. Today, I have with me someone also from Security Metrics. Thank you for joining us. Please tell people a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Um, it's good to meet you. I'm James Farnsworth. I'm a senior penetration tester at Security Metrics, and I like what I do. <laughs> That's, you know what? Liking what you do in your work it makes life so much better. You know, I know people who all they want to do is they go to work, get the things done, check the boxes, leave when it's five to five, and that's how they do work. And yeah. I can't imagine having a job like that. Neither can I. It's actually, so when I talk to like my brother-in-law who does, who's blue collar worker, and he likes his craft, gets better at his craft. And I'm like, we can get along yeah. because you like you have something that's craft for you that you can get better at, you can improve at. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really why I like security. It's because there's and, always something to learn. And I think that's why a lot of people are attracted to security because it's not a, it's not as defined. It's it requires more creativity. And so today we're going to talk about that. How do you get into penetration testing specifically? Le okay, first of all. A lot of people say to me, I want to get into cybersecurity. Yeah. And then you say, which, what, what flavor? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah. And a lot of times they don't even know. But some people have heard of penetration testing, yeah. and, but they don't know what it is. Okay. So maybe just kind of, what is penetration testing? Yeah, like, like at its root. So when you look at security, really, there's a red side, there's a, there's a blue side, and there's this middle area where it's just kind of purple and you combine them, where it's basically collaboration. Um, when you look at penetration testing, it falls on that red side, which means that you're attacking, you're okay. offensive. This blue side is more we're trying to defend. Mm -hmm. And this purple side is that collaboration between each side gener generates new things for you to do. Mm -hmm. So the red can say, hey, this is what we're doing. The blue can go, okay, like verify that bias and then it creates like a cyclical process of working together in collaboration on this side of the uh, on this side of it really what you're doing is you're verifying what a blue teamer will do you're verifying yes like those systems are hardened the way that they should be yes what is exposed is what we thought was exposed so really on this side especially for penetration testing you're really just verifying technical biases so why is that fun i mean it's, it is fun because you get to understand. Like honestly, part like the biggest part of my job is just trying to understand a, a new scenario, a new technology, a new infrastructure, a new web application. Basically, you're just learning and you're understanding what other people are doing. And then you take a background of, okay, with that understanding, how can I abuse it? How can I, how can I, how can I? <laughs> help them be better. Yeah, exactly. How can I how can I wiggle my way into where uh, I technically shouldn't be, yeah. right? So you're using tools and techniques and knowledge to solve a puzzle, yeah. right? Yeah. I love that. Okay, and but if you don't want to learn a bunch of new things, probably not the job for you. Yeah, and it and it does that's that's a good point because I think a lot of people will hear these terms or even any tech job they're like i've heard about that that sounds interesting yeah. and and when you're like how do you get into it and i think the first part of it is understanding why you're interested in something mm -hmm. why do you want to do that thing what's the background and then the next step really is you kind of hit it where it was like talk with people that you know that do that thing because then you can say what can i expect you can get an expectation for what your day-to-day -day looks like and then you had also said something that was really interesting where you're like if you don't like learning new things maybe not for you don't do it <laughs> where that where where it's like okay know yourself enough to know i could show up every day and do that mm -hmm. that's what i like about the audit side of things too if you're doing your job right then every time you, you get into a new environment, there's always new technologies and there's always something that you have to research it to know if you're even evaluating it the right way. Pen test even more so. Yeah. Um, okay, so people have decided, yes, pen test sounds really fun. And also you get to go to things like DEF CON mm -hmm. and Black Hat and see how people are doing all of the new ways of getting into things. Mm -hmm. um, but. But how would you advise people get started? What's the, what is the pathway into penetration testing? Yeah, so let's say that you've done the, the previous steps. You feel like your personality is a good fit. You feel like you've talked with somebody about the day-to-day. -day. That person that you've talked to, mentors are a huge deal. Because, mm -hmm. if you, because we've talked about essentially like here's technology, there's a red and blue side of things, and niching down basically. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, even within pen testing, there are niches, even within that. And so that's, 
I guess the next part is basically decide what kind of pen testing do you want to do? Right. What technologies interest you? Mm -hmm. What kind of things do you want to do? Because I'm more of a general pen tester and it's because I'm like, everything's just too interesting. Like <laughs> I can't pick. Don't make me specialize. <laughs> right, exactly. And so I guess that's the next thing that when you're deciding, like beginning with the end in mind is basically everything that I'm saying is mm -hmm. if you can get an idea of where you want to try and land, that's going to affect what your actions are, how you want to approach it. Because I think part of the question is like, well, what can I do technically? Because I think when people start going, okay, I'm interested in cybersecurity, I want to get into cybersecurity, and it's just a blanket statement, right? But when they're like, I want to do that, and it's, <clears throat> if you don't begin with the end in mind, a lot of people would just go do all of these tech, all of these training platforms, all of these certifications. But even mm. within those, there's more certifications today than you could ever do in your lifetime. And it could get pretty overwhelming if you're just staring at them and going, what, what do I do? And you don't know what the end goal is. Absolutely. Suddenly you're just doing test after test and not really knowing how to focus it. Yeah, exactly right. And since I keep giving you like, begin with the end in mind answers, now I can I can dial in and say, okay, let's just say you want to do things generally. Or, mm -hmm. or, or maybe you don't know enough to begin with the end in mind. Yeah. So you want to begin technically. Obviously talking to that resource and seeing what they do and what they like can be something interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and if you don't know somebody, that might also be a place to start. Can you reach out on social media? Could you have friends of friends who do that? Like mm -hmm. I have people who are like, they, they, in a random conversation, they mention that they know me and they're like, Hey, this person wants to talk to you. Can yeah. they talk to you? And it's like, absolutely. Right. And so find somebody you can interact with from the technical side of things. There are so many low cost and free resources to be able mm -hmm. to do that. Honestly, one of the things that surprises me the most is how much like social media, specifically like Twitter and LinkedIn, play into up-to-date research on yep. interesting topics. Yeah, or and connecting with people. So, but there's a way to do it and there's a way not to do it. Absolutely. So on LinkedIn, I get a lot of people who reach out and they'll say, hi, can you mentor me? And my response is, uh, yeah, on what? <laughs> like what, do you have a question? Yeah. Because can you mentor me is like, it's such a broad thing. Yep. But then I'll have people reach out and say, I listened to your podcast on this topic and I had a question about this thing that you said. Absolutely, I'm going to answer that one. Absolutely. That's really interesting. And yeah. so I think that's a way if you, so let's say you're following somebody and you really feel like you could vibe with whatever they've got going on. Yeah then paying attention to what they're saying and a asking a specific focused question is a way to develop a relationship with somebody that you really want to be able to um, call on as a resource. Absolutely. I think that is a really good thing. So I have a question for you then. Yes. So we've established that having a mentor or at least somebody that you know that you can bounce ideas off of. Yes. One thing that I feel like is a very important skill in anything, any learning, is being able to know how to appropriately interact with somebody when yes. you ask for their time. Uh -huh. And you had hit on some things, but if you could you give me like your top three things that you look for when somebody wants you to help mentor them, or, and it doesn't have to be like, will you be my mentor, but just like when they take your mm -hmm. time, when they ask for your time, what right. do you look for? So if they, first of all, if they don't know me at all, but they're asking me a targeted question that I can answer within about two minutes, that is a great approach. So you have to know exactly what you want, the information you want from them, yeah. right? If you know someone kind of at your work that you interact with uh, fairly often, then you might say, hey, I was more interested in kind of sharing some ideas about this. I have these ideas. So you need to start with the idea that you have done your homework. You've done some research. It's not just a blank page. Hi, I have this empty cup. Please fill it up. No, no, no. That, I, I don't even know where to start with that, yeah. right? So the more prepared you are as, as an, <laughs> with your questions or with what you want from me, the more likely I am to, to offer that. And so let's say that you and I work together. Um, if, if you've asked me a question in the past yeah. and then argued with me about the answer, <laughs> I am not going to be the person that bounces those ideas off, uh, off of, you know, with you yeah. in, in the future. So, um, there are people who I consider my peers, but that we mentor each other because yeah. there's so much to know and there's so much to, you know, interpret that how do I, how do I get to the end from the beginning on some of these things? Well, we have to have a relationship of trust based on 
the small things that we've encountered up until that point. So, so really, when you're reaching out to someone, you have to ask yourself, realistically, if I were in their shoes, what, what's, a, what's a valid expectation from this person, right? And, yeah. and how do I shape that? How about yourself? Have you ever had someone ask you about mentoring? Yeah, uh, yes, and I'll, and I'll respond to that. One thing that I thought was really cool about what you said is it's building a relationship of trust. Yeah. And, and that level of trust that you have with a person is going to affect how you interact with them. I love that. I love that so much because when you ask that question, I'm like, yeah, I have. And some of them are people that I work with. Mm -hmm. So there was a guy that was a project coordinator and and I was like one day he was he was just interacting super well with everybody and just nerding out on a bunch of stuff. We had like a, a, a team meeting or whatever, like a, a training they do it yeah. like once every quarter. And he was just in there and just, just having a great time with mm -hmm. everybody. And I was like, this guy is a nerd. Yeah. Straight up is a nerd. <laughs> Smart people. Right? And so when it was like, hey, are you interested? like how he would interact because there was already, I was, we were already familiar. We were mm -hmm. already doing that. Like he had already built that relationship of trust with people. Right. And, and so it was like, well, yeah, actually I am. And then it, it was just cool. And so when you had talked about that, when you're like, how about you? Yes, it's something similar. And I think that one thing that's also really cool about what you said is regardless of whatever level of trust you have with somebody, you're always want to you're always going to want to come prepared. Mm -hmm. You're always going to want to yeah. maximize that person's time, because honestly, like time is the only thing when you really look at it that we have, right? Yes. And so that I liked those two points. Those were both really cool. I, I think another thing that we sometimes forget is that the people around us, we need to treat everyone with gentleness and the expectation that they are not as on top of things as they might seem from the outside. And so when you come to someone with a question, it can feel like a pop quiz. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you're like, oh no, what if I don't answer this properly? And so so being prepared is good, having that relationship of trust, but also expecting that they might not have an answer for you right away. And so um, phrasing things in a way that can make it okay for them not to have that answer Absolutely. is going to make it more likely that they're going to want to have these conversations with you. Absolutely. Sometimes talking to people and getting that mentorship relationship or asking those questions online can help you kind of focus in on that. But maybe sometimes it helps to know a little bit more about these broad categories. Yeah. Um, you said you're a generalist. Mm -hmm. That infers that there are specialists. So yep. what kind of specialties are there in pen testing? Absolutely. I'm, I'll probably answer that more from like when I had talked about those three lanes. I'll probably answer it more from like a generic red side. Sure. Because as you dial down... Honestly, like when you look at a specialist, if I'm looking at a specialist, mm -hmm. I just go, they're just really good at that technology. Mm -hmm. So if you look at like general mm -hmm. hackers, usually they're probably just going to be generally good at like IT administration mm -hmm. to be just to be very frank, because in that case, you're probably dealing with cloud. You're probably dealing with I dealt with on prem systems like, mm -hmm. you're, you know what I mean? There are also people who are just really stinking good at privilege escalation. Right. Right. And so what that probably means is they're probably have been really good at being a sysadmin with mm -hmm. Windows and Linux and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. They're probably very, very familiar with that. Yeah. Even if you look at like from another red side, like people are like, well, red teamers. If you look at a red teamer, chances are they're just really stinking good at Active Directory mm -hmm. and really, really, really good at, op at Windows operating systems. Yeah. And so it's just like, they're just really good at those technologies because they've spent the time to evaluate them holistically. Mm -hmm. Another one would also be like web application penetration testers. Those, and even within that one, that one like breaks me because I'm like a good web application penetration tester is good at the infrastructure that it's built on. Mm -hmm. So whether that's, okay, we do cloud or we do self-hosting or like we do any of that. It's also like the administration for like when you set up like DNS or you set up any of like the pointers, like how do you, how do I actually get to where I'm going? Right. And then there's the coding side of it. And then within the coding side of it, there's also people who are like, I'm just really good at Java. Yeah. Or I'm just really good at Node. <laughs> or I'm just really good. And so one thing yeah. gets them in. And yeah. so I think that's where we come into this conversation of from those sides. Like those are the types of jobs you can look at. Chances are if you look at technology in general and you go, what's a technology? Mm -hmm. Like whether that's coding, whether that's like administration in some kind of way from like sysadmin type deal, networking. Networking mm -hmm. is huge, yep. it's, right? You can look Absolutely. at that and, and, and that's especially comes back to like if I'm evaluating, because we're, I think most of this conversation has been focused on I'm new, I don't have any tech background, how do yeah. I get into cybersecurity? Honestly, you want to know the truth, like 
there are people from other domains of knowledge mm -hmm. who are like, I'm interested in cybersecurity. Yeah. And if you have a domain of knowledge that you're interested in, please come over. Yeah. Like we need more exactly. people. And this is a tangent and then I'll get back onto it. Nope. But yeah. one of my favorite posts from Specter Ops was like, I don't remember his name. I think it, it's Will, but he, his handle is Harmjoy. And he has this three, three blog post on like this new thing they're coming out with called Nemesis. Mm -hmm. And it's this idea of like combining data science with basically penetration testing. Like mm -hmm. how can we use data to improve how we attack things essentially is the right. question that, very, very broad question that they're trying to answer it would seem. But in there, <laughs> one of his statements is like, we could have used more computer scientists. Like as we evaluate like this, this track record of how are we testing, it was mm -hmm. like if we had just approached it more like data or like computer scientists right. to begin with, it would have just been better. And can I give like a, yeah. a real world example of this? Please. Because sometimes you get into the, the digital world and it's hard to quantify these things. But look, we don't know what we don't know. And then when yeah. you get somebody who knows the domain, it changes the whole game. So for decades, there were there were these designs on the side of like Egyptian, uh, you know, walls and wherever you temples yeah. and things that showed somebody going ahead of these blocks that were getting moved into place for the pyramids laying down water. And the, the archaeologist said, oh, well, this is a ritual thing. They're they're blessing the ground with. Water. And then the minute they got a blue collar guy <laughs> who understood how physical surfaces interact, he's like. No, you gotta you gotta wet the ground to make those blocks slide. That's they were actually that was part of the movement pro that weren't what do you mean blessing the ground? They just need it needed to be wet, right? Yeah. And so when you apply that to the the computer science world or the the you know security world, somebody who might have done things things in a domain for a lot of years yeah. would say, Oh, yeah, this is how that works because of these things. Yeah. And so bringing other views other perspectives of this what you're trying to accomplish like it shortcuts that absolutely looping back because i know that i drug us down a rabbit hole yeah, but looping did. back <laughs> if you're looking at like okay penetration tester you can look at web application penetration mm -hmm. testing is a big domain yeah networking is a big domain where it's just like i need to know how to move laterally through networks mm -hmm. where it's like maybe i'm really good at attacking a whole network as mm -hmm. opposed to just like one or two computers yeah um Coming down from that, there's also where if you have like network penetration testers, they're also pretty good at identifying what services are available. Mm -hmm. How can I attack those services? Where have I had success in that? And then also in that same bundle, I guess we're talking about network penetration testing yeah. right now. Um, but there's also Active Directory. right? And then obviously you have reverse engineers who go through and they go, how does this work? How does malware work? Mm -hmm. How can I deploy malware? What's the end goal? And and so really you're just looking at like big ones are network penetration testing, web application penetration testing, mobile penetration testing, mm -hmm. and then like red teams. Exactly. Yeah. And people ask me all the time, how can I break into cybersecurity as if they can go from having nothing to being part of it? You can, but you're going to get a low level cybersecurity role. And yeah. yes, you can be trained from that role. But I, I have repeatedly said the place to start in cybersecurity is in IT. Yeah. Um, so my per and I know this because my personal background, I spent a little over 20 years nice. in IT operations, right? Nice. So um, uh, managing AD and, and, and helping with the networks and doing the sysadmin thing. So all of these things yep. that feed into a basic knowledge of where the attack points are yeah. and giving you the vocabulary and a basic understanding of how these things work is the jump off point to the cybersecurity realm of things, right? Absolutely. And and so I know people don't like hearing all oh, you, and you don't have to spend 20 years in IT. Yeah. I just happened to do that. I don't know why I didn't think security was the place for me. Right. Because it obviously is. I'm really having a good time right. being part of this. Right. Um, but that is a great place to start is in networking is a great place to start. Active directory management, great place to start. And these are places where you can get entry-level IT jobs yep. and start managing these things and start understanding hands-on how it works. And then you can understand 
how to exploit them or protect them. Absolutely. And one thing that I liked about what you said is basically like it doesn't have to be necessarily your first job doesn't have to be like this is where I started in cybersecurity. Yeah. Like my first job was working here in support and yeah. just like what is governance risk compliance? <laughs> I have no clue what that even means. Like what is an SAQ? Like, right? And so but it, and I think one of the suggestions is when it's like, how do I break into it? Mm -hmm. You're kind of hitting on this thing that I find is super important is just get a job. Yeah. Yes. Just get a job. Because mm -hmm. if you get a job, like there are memes where people are like, why do you want this job? It's because I need money. It's like, well, you need experience. Well, it's like, you could give me experience, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of this circle. It's very circular. Where you just got to break that somehow yeah. by just starting. And that will also give you the opportunity to interact with people and have them be your mentors mm -hmm. by having targeted specific questions. And like the way you did it, where you started in support, that is not a super fun job. No. And that's not the job that you wanted to have in, in yeah. you know, cybersecurity. But it was this place that you started, like you said, you made those relationships, you proved that you were serious about doing the work and learning the things, and then that advanced you towards where you really wanted to be. And and I think maybe we kind of get in our own way a little bit saying, well, I need to earn this amount of money and I need to have this kind of job and I need this title. Okay, yeah. um, great. What are you going to do to get there? Yeah. Not how do I start there? Yeah. Exactly right. So, all right, you want to get your first job. Okay. We, we've already talked about, you know, finding out what the job is and what to expect and all those things. Yeah. Then people say to me, well, what if I go to school? Mm -hmm. Can I go to school and get this job? Should I get a degree for this? Should I get a certification? Yeah. What are your thoughts on those things? I think those are really good questions. And the first thing I think I'm going to say is everybody's journey is different. And I know that may be a very like... <laughs> Yeah. Where we have a lot of technical people where it's just like specification, Kumbaya. you just tell me what I need, <laughs> right? And that is a very like broad, broad <laughs> statement, but everybody's journey is different. So mm -hmm. when I started, like I didn't, I didn't have any certifications. I didn't have any work experience and I didn't have I had the triple whammy and I didn't go to school, right? <laughs> so Beautiful, it, perfect, great starting place. <laughs> right. So it's like, well, I just got to work on one of those, right? Yeah. Because like, if you look at it, um, that's where you start. And so for me, that's, I started with work experience. Mm -hmm. um, I love this story yeah. because it shows that there's different ways to get into cybersecurity. You didn't have any of those things. Mm -hmm. I had a master's degree. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, yep. And I had all this work experience in order to get thing, and then I got certifications. The, when you say everybody's journey starts from a different place, that's yeah. exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. For me, if I look at it, what I needed as an individual, and this comes back to knowing yourself, and I guess we can just tick that as something like, yeah. if you're interested, just like do this little self-evaluation, yeah. <laughs> right? Because- It's really hard though. <laughs> because for me, what you said was very true for me. Like I needed to be in the workplace. Yeah. My personality, it, was, it meant more to me. But there are people who are just very like, I need to know a lot before I start. There is that. And then there are people who, don't feel ready to jump into that workplace experience and they feel like they need the structure of a of a university program to tell them what to study. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Looping back to your question, my personal opinion is you don't need it to do it. Yeah. Right? 100%. Um, now, I will say there are some benefits to doing it. Um, big one is, and for me, it's like if you decide you go to school because of your personal experience, my, mm -hmm. where I'm like super passionate and there's the fist, but like mm -hmm. I'm super passionate, <laughs> is is if you're going to go to school, mm -hmm. go to school for something domain specific for a technology. Yes. Because those are the degrees that are more mature. Mm -hmm. Those are the degrees that we've had, what, like 40 plus years yeah. to be like, this is what computer science is. Right. This is what whatever is. And so- This if, is mathematics. Exactly right? right. Which I could talk about that, but I'm not gonna derail <laughs> us. I could, but I'm not going to. Um, but that's that for me is like people are like, well, should I get a cybersecurity degree? Yeah, and I'm like, you can. Uh huh. You're probably going to get more out of a master's cybersecurity degree, which implies that you have a bachelor's in yeah. something else, right? That is a lot of education before you finally get to the jumping off point to actually get a job. Exactly right, and, and a lot of money. It is so much money and a lot of time. Oh man, the debt that you put yourself into. Yep. So you need to make sure that those degrees are something that are going to pay for themselves. Absolutely. And and it's it's not guaranteed that that's going yep. to happen for a long, long time. And so people sometimes ask me, well, okay, then if, if not that, then what about certifications? Sure. I'm going to 
close the loop on this statement because we were talking about, and I will get to that. No, and yeah, I'm pointing at you a lot. I'm sorry if I'm no, like, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I so, like so passionate. I did not force you past where we were talking. <laughs> yeah. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, to close the loop on that discussion, there yeah. are more affordable options. Like mm -hmm. for me, I'm like, a degree was important to me mm -hmm. because my mom was like, you will get a degree. Like this is what, yeah, ever. And mean, so it's like. You mean a degree was important to your family? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it was important to me as well. Oh, there were things that okay. I'm like, I, I want to do that. Yeah. Like as a kid, it was just very much like, I, like I was the first person in my family to do, to get a degree. Okay, that's right. Important. Other yeah. than my mom, like my dad didn't have a degree. None of my brothers and sisters had degrees, sure. and so I was like, I I want to do that. Like mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I finish that. And so again, personal, like what is personal? Yeah. But there, like the WGU is where I went. Nice, right? WGU and so, has a great reputation. Very affordable, mm -hmm. accredited. Yep very, very job focused. Yes. And so all of these things where we're talking about, okay, like degrees, why wouldn't you do them? Schools like WGU mm -hmm. try and undercut the 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 hard things yeah. that come along with degrees. Now certifications. Yes. I love certifications apparently. <laughs> They're so good, dude. They're so good. Right. And there are a lot that just honestly, like, it's just like get started. Mm -hmm. Because when people one of the things that's really cool about our pen test department is we give people a chance mm -hmm. because people have to have work experience. Yes. And so when people come and they're like, I'm interested in this, anybody who has done certifications, whatever they are, even if it's like I did the A+, plus, like I'm not a huge fan of CompTIA certifications, Yeah. but, but you it, put in effort it's, and it's time. It, uh, it's, it's skin in something the game. to show yeah. that you did work. And to be quite frank, like they still cover the same topics. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so any of the certifications, whether like another thing that I've done is the CCNA, mm -hmm. because we were talking about certifications, we, um, and domain specific information mm -hmm. where it was like, we, I started doing this thing and I was like, I have no clue what networking is, but everybody is like for this domain specific CCNA is what people look at. And so I was like, great, let's do that. Yeah. And so it doesn't even have to be, that comes back to the question of, do you know what you're interested in? And it doesn't have to be a cybersecurity certification. Yeah. Like it, it just really doesn't. So all of those things are good. And I, I, I do like certifications usually because they're not as expensive as school. You don't have to wait for four years to do mm -hmm. it. And it's a, it's a quick way, right? I say quick because those certs can be anywhere from one month to a year. Yeah. Or, well, and it kind of depends on the person too. Absolutely. So certifications. Awesome. Now, so one of the reasons that I'll tell that that people want to, to pursue um, either degrees or certifications is because the hiring manager, the post, whatever algorithm they're trying to get past that's posted, yeah. they can't get past unless that says that on on their um, resume. Mm -hmm. And so usually I'll tell people, you're probably trying to work for a company that's too big and won't see you as an individual anyway. Mm -hmm. Find a smaller company, find a startup company, find a local company, rather than trying to go to, to recognized name company. Absolutely. And they're, they're a lot more likely, first of all, to give you a chance, and then second of all, to let you learn more things than just the thing that you were hired for. Absolutely. Right? Uh, here's another way to, to kind of mm, sneak past that <laughs> algorithm. You can use words like um, uh, willing and ready and <laughs> pursuing yeah. along with the certification that yeah. they are asking for, yeah. right? So um, depending on, for, for for QSA, for example, you have to have the CISSP or equivalent. Yeah. You have to have the CISA or equivalent. And so those are some things that, yes, you have to get certifications for, but often the, the person that's hiring, the organization that's hiring you, is willing to pay for those certifications. Mm -hmm. CISSP, that's expensive, it's no joke, right? Yeah. And so getting someone else to pay for it for you, that's the way to go. But yeah, finding a way to get past that that hiring algorithm, yeah. it's not it's not always straightforward, but use some creative, you know, liberty in in the words that are on your um, on resume and then have the, the ability to back up the fact that, yeah, I talked about this, but I don't have it. Here's here's how I believe I can get it and what I right. what you need to do to help me get there. Right. You're hitting on something that I find very interesting because I think we've hinted it hinted it like how do I get into cybersecurity? And one big theme has been communication. Yeah. And security specifically is one place that I look at and go, soft skills. The the difference between somebody who I'm like, that is a good penetration tester or that is a good X, whatever job mm -hmm. title. 
is the communication skills. Absolutely. So can you talk to me a little bit about the role that just in security in general that you feel like communication plays? Oh, I think it, it is. I think communication is more important than the technical skills because if you can't communicate properly, this is the information I need from you, or this is what you need to do to solve these problems. What are you doing to move that security needle? Absolutely. Right. And, and let's say you are in security and uh, it's your job to communicate to non-technical people what they need to do to close the gaps that you see. If you go in there guns blazing and use technical language, they're just going to go, yeah, okay, whatever, sit down. Um, but if you can properly phrase things in their language using what's important to them, Absolutely. then you're going to be able to increase the security in your environment, and that's your job, Love right? It. And so without communication, how do you do that? Mm, it's going to be a struggle. Yeah. And I think for me, one of the things that's interesting about that is when we talk about this idea that knowing the expectation of the job. So if somebody's like, I'm interested in pen testing. I want to do pen testing. We come back to this red, purple, blue idea Yeah. because I like the columns. But <laughs> if you're doing pen testing, chances are it's going to be a consultancy. Mm -hmm. Chances are you're going to be working with lots of different customers. You're yeah. going to be working with lots of different clients. Mm -hmm. If you can't express or move that security needle, I love mm -hmm. that. The whole reason this side of the org chart is coming to this side of the org chart is to go, how can you help us? And if you go, cool, I've evaluated you technically, but I can't come in and tell you that or I can't express how, like what the most important thing is or help you prioritize yeah. or say, why are you coming to me? What do you need? Establish those mm -hmm. needs and basically what is the purpose of this pen test? Yes. Then it's going to have a really hard time closing the loop. I'm so glad you said that because what is the purpose of this pen test? A lot of times a group will say, I need a pen test. And it's usually like, oh, I'm getting this compliance or standard, whatever certification, and I need a pen test. Great. What kind do you need? And they go, mm hmm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? What do I need? I need a pen test. <laughs> I just need it. Uh, oh, okay. Um, and then and then you start having to ask questions. If you ask the questions um, in an unclear way, yeah. then the answers that you get are not going to help them get the information or get the type of pen test that they need. And so suddenly they've spent maybe thousands of dollars on penetration testing that wasn't even applicable to the problem they were trying to solve. Yeah. I I love that. I love that so much because they I get to be on sales calls and honestly it's one of the coolest things to be able to go okay let's talk about your needs because that's really all a sales call is for me as I'm like let's talk about what you need what do you need and then the cool thing about that is because we have this relationship we get to talk about that now when I'm doing the testing I get to go, I know that person. I uh -huh. know what they're interested in. Yeah. And from the technical side of things, I get to prioritize what they're interested in. And so when we're talking about kind of just tying it in with what we've talked about, how do you get into cybersecurity? What's important in cybersecurity? That communication skill that we keep hitting mm -hmm. on is something you're going to have to practice mm -hmm. and become a master at. And I, and I will still work on that until the day I die because I'm like, w that, is, that is what makes impact. Right. Because at the end of the day, like for for people, usually in cybersecurity, if they have a satisfying job, mm -hmm. it's because of the impact. It's mm -hmm. because they feel like it's important, right? There's this higher level, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the way you have that impact is through communicating with other humans. And so I know now, so uh, I am certain that are, there are people who are listening or watching right now the podcast who want to be pen testers, who are just dying inside just a little bit right now because we said, communication yeah because a lot of people who are attracted to this don't want to communicate yeah. with people because it's not comfortable for them sure and I get that and so I'm gonna give a little example of what I did to I know everybody thinks I am this great communicator <laughs> now <laughs> because, but let me tell you my first year in college yeah I realized that I was gonna be miserable for my entire life because I had no friends Okay. And here's why. I didn't know how to talk to people. Yeah. I didn't know how to communicate. This is not unusual for people who are interested in cybersecurity and in pen yeah. testing. And so here's what I did. It works. Promise you. Yeah. Every single day, I said, I, here's my goal. I'm going to talk to somebody I've never talked to before. And I didn't care whether it was somebody at the grocery store or somebody in a library or somebody in a class. Or it didn't, you know, it had to be somebody I had never had a conversation with before. And it didn't have to be long. Yeah. But I made myself yeah. talk to that other person. And I was such a big baby, you guys. <laughs> it was really, uh, really, really hard. And so I would some days go and talk to someone. And I felt so 
anxious about that interactive experience that I would go back to my um, dorm room and literally cry yeah. and be like, okay, that was really hard, but I'm going to get it together. And one day I'm going to be good at this. Yeah. And the next day I would go out and do it again. So yeah. if you're, if you're, if your stopping point as a pen tester is that communication piece, it just takes practice, just like yeah. anything else. It's a skill you learn just like anything else. Absolutely. And one day you get good at it. Okay, so I have a follow-up question for okay. you. So now now we're we're past college, gym, yeah. right? And yeah. How do your emotions change over that period of time? Because you had mentioned anxiety, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So does that ever change? It, if it does, why? Yeah. And can you talk to it me a little does, bit more about that? Because you get confident in your skill sets. Yeah. So I had anxiety over communication because it was not in my skill set. Sure. I was terrible at it. Yeah. Right? And I got confident in my ability to deal with other people saying things that made me feel bad about myself. Yeah. We all go through that, right? Yeah. We all have these interactions where people say stuff and suddenly, especially in the realm of cybersecurity, you're in that, oh, what's it called when you're like, am I really supposed to be doing this? Am I really any Imposter good at this? Syndrome. Imposter syndrome, that's the word. So we, we all get caught up in that because there's so much to know. And how can you possibly know all of that? Absolutely. And then somebody says something to challenge your knowledge and then you're like, oh, no, maybe I really am terrible at this. But over time, yeah. you get to realize, oh, people are gonna just say stuff. Yeah. And it's probably because they feel that way too. Yeah. And they're probably trying to put me off m balance because they feel off balance. Yep. And if you can eventually kind of learn this almost becomes like a Zen practice where <laughs> people say things and you go, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to let that go. Yeah. Right. And then you continue with your purpose. So it comes back to what you said earlier. What's my goal? Yep. What's my focus? What am I trying to accomplish here? Absolutely. And you can apply that to every aspect of the job, in, including the communication portion of it. Absolutely. Where that becomes part of the skill set and part of the job. Have you experienced this? Have you ever felt those things as well? Or I, so I am an introvert. I really am. Like I, I feel anxious. Actually, we were on with another tester where we get to get on video chats and we like team test sometimes. Yeah. And I was just telling him, I was like, this is how I feel. Da, 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 da. And I was like, man, like I feel anxiety so much, right? Like yeah. I, I really do. But at the end of the day, I think that for me comes back to like, why is cybersecurity important to me? Yeah. And and quite frankly, like what gives cybersecurity meaning? Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, the answer is almost always people. Yes. And that's that's kind of a tough realization yes. if you're like, man, the technology, and mm -hmm. you're like, a person built that, and you're like, Whoa. Wow, yeah. and it just feeds in on itself, yeah. right? And so, yeah, like for me, I do feel anxiety, absolutely, 110%. But at the end of the day, the thing that helps me is what you mentioned with like practicing and identifying, that's important. Yeah. And, and, the reason, and, and the reason and understanding what role communication plays in what's important to me, yeah. which at the end of the day is making a difference to people who maybe don't have those skills or yep. or have questions, right? Absolutely. Well, I didn't know we were going to go down this particular vulnerability <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, rabbit hole, but yeah. I think it's important because it's so, I, I, this is a theme that I hear over and over and over again from people who are coming into cybersecurity and pen, yeah. pen testing especially, yeah. is wondering, am I the only person that feels like this? Yeah. You're not. You know, everybody feels like this. It's okay. Well, and to tie it back into the conversation, I think we've talked about, man, there are lots of things to focus on. Yeah. And and one of, I'll always get laughed at it, but but one of the things that I like mentioned one of the first times I started in, in our department was a Shel Silverstein poem about like eating an elephant. Yeah. And I had read it and I was basically like, how do you, like the conclusion is how do you eat an elephant? Yeah. And it's like one, one bite, bite at, at a time. time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that's the thing to realize where it also comes back to like the statement of if you don't like learning, probably not for you, knowing mm. yourself kind of a mm -hmm. thing. Because as I look at it and when I feel overwhelmed, because it does get overwhelming. It does. As I go, this is a lifelong pursuit. Yeah. This is a lifelong love. This yeah. is a thing that I'm like, I enjoy. And it didn't start out that way. Yeah. I think sometimes it, like when you look at somebody who's been doing it, like I've just been doing it for just under a decade, which I say that and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> not like just testing, but just security in general yeah. is that also grows because it started with a need, like I have to pay the bills or whatever. Yeah. And then it just grows. Right. So tying it back in, like you don't have to work on everything at once. Mm -hmm. Those junior penetration testers or yep. even those junior technical roles 
don't require you to be the best communicator immediately. Yeah. No, they don't. It's a place to. And to as work a callback to one of our original con- part, parts of this conversation, that's where your mentor comes in. If you have built a relationship of trust with other people, and you know that these are things that are getting, if these feelings of like, how do I do this, and and the feeling of the thing starts getting in the way, you have somebody you can talk to about and say, wow, how are you feeling about this? I'm feeling these things. Yep. Right. So. Um, so that's that's part of it. I don't want to end on the on the anxiety <laughs> focus of this conversation. So before we wrap it up, I yeah. just want to say there's a few ways that you can practice the skills of being a pen tester yeah. and even some communication in it. What are some free or low cost ways that you can practice learning to be a pen tester? Absolutely. So the first thing is if you follow people on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds weird. If you don't have a Twitter account and you don't want to engage with people, that's fine. I think fine. you mean X. Yeah, X, uh, look. X. <laughs> and LinkedIn. Those are all really good places. Yeah. They they literally are made to create content. So people are incentivized to create free or low cost content yeah. because that's how they engage with exactly. you. Exactly. So that's one really good thing. Mm-hmm. The next thing is there are a bunch of platforms, to be honest. TriHackMe is one of them. Mm-hmm. TCM Security has a bunch of low cost certifications um, and they run deals all of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, their Hack the Box mm-hmm. is genuinely one of my favorite places to go. And I think sometimes they may get like a bad rap where it's like, ah, they don't hold your hand or they don't explain some of these background things like they do now. They have been, they have an academy, they have boxes. Have have... you heard of API University? Yes. Because that's a new one for me. I just heard of this last year. So also free. Absolutely. And that guy is on LinkedIn all the time. Yeah. Like here's this thing and people reshare. And that's the other thing is you, as you interact on those, you're going to start hearing like this is the certification or this is a certification yeah. and lots of people give their reviews of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the last one is also those people, if they're passionate about cybersecurity, mm-hmm. chances are they have a bunch of GitHubs and stuff that where you can just spin up local VMs yeah. and do a bunch of stuff. Be careful, obviously. Um, don't get pwned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like there's a bunch of free things that you can do that don't require tons of mm-hmm. money. Offsec also has their proving grounds. Yes. So if you want to get more familiar, because like the OSCP is the the standard that in, is. right? So yeah. if you're trying to get more familiar with them, that's also an, another one you can do. Well, I think this has been some really valuable information for people who are, are starting their, their journey and uh, um, went some unexpected places. And I hope that it was of value to the people there who are listening. I'll bet you there's at least one person out there going, Thanks. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you for taking the time. Oh, no, thank you. I think we should do this again. This was really fun. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for watching. To watch more episodes of Security Metrics Podcast, click on the box on the left. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. See you on the slopes.